Okay, so after we last met, um, I've moved out of the project space that I was in. It's a great space, but I can't have it full time. Um, I'm in the space next week, but I also painted my walls, moved my furniture around, and set up a space in my bedroom. So there's kind of a dichotomy there in itself. I've got a living and working space, but I've constantly liked to change my space to keep my work fresh in a way. Um, so yeah, it's like living and working space. So it's split into two, painted ha half of the room white, the other room stays the same. So that in itself is in a way like a being in and out of the working space in the same space. And I also met up with Edmund, who's also in the show. And we had a little discussion uh, he, about the project. We think we're not gonna do like a whole project in a collaboration, we're gonna do it as a separate project. So in a way we're like three artists for two, it's like three, three for the price of two. Uh, we're gonna have our own work and then around the project. And then have individual an individual collaborative practice whereby he brought me a couple of watercolor paintings and I gave him a small sculpture and a set of photocopies. But I think he, from what, from the sounds of it, he, he got very initial ideas as soon as he saw the sculpture and started playing with it. And then, um, but uh, for me, I think I've hung his uh, paintings up and I think I'm gonna live with them for a bit, just kind of have them there in the space. Um, and then eventually something will come to me where, where I want to make an intervention. We don't want the, we don't want the collaboration to be about defacement uh, because that's, when you swap artwork and work on artwork, sometimes it could be easily about defacing because um, it's just an instinctive thing just to make some mark on something. But we want to, rather than take something away from each other's work, add something to each other's work in that way. Um, and at the moment it's kind of playing a bit of a patience in that. Like, just living with the watercolours and seeing what I can do with them. Uh, and I've been making some other work. Um, we're working with uh, mirrors and pearl clams, and um, which is my usual work. But um, just trying to think, of, figure out a way of making something quite small and something quite large. One, the small piece would be like inviting the viewer into a new space because it's reflective and it's encased in something that's covering it up. But then. Uh, in certain materials that generally don't really go that well together. For instance, uh, some uh, crushed velvet that's been stroked and then it looks different because the grain has been pushed to one side, so it becomes darker. It's a very subtle kind of intervention, changed without any intervention. You've not applied anything, you've applied no material to something, but you've uh, you've used your hands to create something and it's something that's temporary. And in a way that's kind of, like I remember going to Rotterdam and having a similar feeling to when I went to Canary Wharf for the first time. It's kind of feeling that you're in a scene of Blade Runner or something. So I put all to side all these feelings I've got about uh, capitalism and, and things like that, but just to appreciate the space visually. And, and it's the same going to New York, things like that. Uh, you just feel tiny and you feel really small. And these big, like futuristic buildings, that feel like they're. You, it feels like you stepped into the future, and you feel quite insignificant, uh, which I quite enjoy. I quite enjoy being lost in a landscape, even if it's an urban landscape. I quite enjoy that, and and I guess my work's kind of going to be a strive for that. It's not going to be an imitation of it. It's going to be more of a. A. Signal from that. Initial feeling of insignificance and. It could be quite humorous, I don't know. I guess it could be quite interesting just to see what me and Edmund come up with and to see if people can really decide for themselves whose work is whose. That would be quite interesting. So you'd have like three or four objects or paintings and you won't be necessarily sure which one's mine and which one's his. And but it's also, I mean, obviously we all know and because the process is quite explicit because in the sense that we're taking our pieces away from each other and then um, not knowing what we're doing to them. I mean, if we were in the same space and we were doing it together, uh, making the work together, then we would obviously know what was happening, but it's gonna be a surprise for us as much as it would be a surprise for everyone else. 
uh, as to what it's going to be because we will have no preconceptions of what it could be. It could be something completely different. It could be something we just something added on to it. But yeah, that's basically where it is now.